All right, let's get the first case underway. I've got a squash game in eight minutes. <laughs> Who represents the defendant? That would be me, Judge Ralston. Oh, my God, your clothes. You look like an adult chat line hoe working at dot-com millionaire convention. <laughs> Gee, could you be more specific? You, my good woman, are inappropriately dressed. Really? I would have worn my thong bikini, but I'm having it restrung. It is a uh, pet suit, Your Honor. I cannot hear you unless you change your clothes. I believe I am dressed appropriately. I cannot hear you. Your Honor, I have worn this conservative outfit in court many times before. da 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 turn out the lights. Turn out the lights. In fact, it's the only suit I have. Don't talk to me. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. Your Honor, you're worse than my mother. I am going to postpone this case because of your appearance. Does the Crown have anything to add? Yes, Your Honor. Crown has nothing to hide. I feel we're going down the wrong road. Oh, really? How so? Well, you may be giving this case undue exposure, <laughs> revealing too much of courtroom procedure in pubic. Uh, public. Your Honor, the Crown prosecutor is naked. At least I'm not dressed like some slut. Your Honor! Who's talking? I can't hear anybody. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to do my job as a responsible lawyer, and I'm pleading my case before Judge Nudie Prudy. God, I wish I had your legs. With all due respect, Your Honor, don't you think you were a little tough on her? Well, most certainly not. You did seem rather prejudiced about her clothing. Oh, her clothes are fine. Her, I don't like. <laughs> and you, next time, wear a tie. Next case. CTV News with Lloyd Robertson. Sitting in for Lloyd Robertson, Lloyd Robertson. Good evening. I haven't retired yet. The Prime Minister is in Africa this week, officially making him the first Prime Minister to tour more often than the Grateful Dead. He joins me now from Nigeria. Hakuna Matata, Floyd! Pardon me? It is from the Lion King. Lion King. Oh, no, no, no. The king of the lion is Art Eggleton. I knew I should have taken the night off and let Sandy fill in. Prime Minister, describe your trip so far. Well, you know, Floyd, I have witnessed an atmosphere of hospitality and great tensions, not to mention many people with gun-like thing. Africa can be a very dangerous place. Africa, nothing. I am talking about security at Ottawa Airport. <laughs> what exactly are you trying to achieve on this trip, Prime Minister? Well, I am trying to do two things. One, visit many African leaders, and two, avoid being eaten by boa constrictor. <laughs> I also hope to meet with member of the UN Economic Commission of Africa. You mean the UN Economic Commission of Africa? Yeah, them too. <laughs> You've been in Africa a few days now. What are your impressions? Oh, this place is rugged, yet beautiful, untamed, yet compiling. It is just like Disney World Animal Kingdom, <laughs> but without the lineup. Yes, it is quite majestic. I says Africa is all inspiring. Like, I see an elephant and I go, ah. Oh. I see a giraffe and I go, ah. Oh. You know what I says when I see a monkey? Ah. Oh. No way, every zoo have monkey. You should get out more, Lloyd. Would you say your trip has been successful? For sure is my trip sucks the sass. <laughs> it is very important to visit here because problems will be focused in June when I host the meeting of the financing gate. Gate? Oh, you mean G8? That is what I says, gate. It is big conferring this summer in Kenya Kisas in Alberta. <laughs> 
We will be talking about serial issue of third world and how to dealing with oppressing Zimbabwe leader, President Mibuber. <laughs> and that nasty situation in Middle East with PLO guy? Yes, sir, Arafat. <laughs> Final question. Will your trip really benefit the people of Africa? Floyds, I am fight to lessen hardship, stop oppression of the peoples, and removing unfair cold and care govern in Africa. <laughs> Will your trip really benefit the people of Africa? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> and that's the kind of day it's been. I'm Lloyd Robertson. And Sandy, you owe me big time. <laughs> I'm Taffy, singer, children's entertainer, EI collector. <laughs> I've got a new CD out. It's called Accordion Music to Pinch Your Nipples By. <laughs> Featuring the Ouch Song. But I'm here to talk about an issue that affects most of society today, including Kelowna. A recent report has revealed that violence causes people to watch TV. Researchers have proven everyone who has ever held up a bank has seen at least one episode of Dharma and Greg. And most terrorists watch TV just to see if they made the national. So I have written a thoughtful and provocative song to draw attention to violence and how it can incite people to watch TV. If you kill or steal while on power roll at home, you'll love your remote control. And if you're a criminal getaway driver, I bet your favorite show is Survivor. Without amends can lead you crooks to watching friends And the art of the law will show its might So bad boys better go from wrong to right Or no TV for you tonight <laughs> Wendy Report with Wendy Messler Our top story. Over two million people watched the Pierre Trudeau miniseries this past week. CBC executives admit the ratings would have been higher if instead of being Prime Minister, Trudeau had been a curler. <laughs> Prime Minister Chrétien is getting a new official aircraft. The plane will be in service as soon as work crews can scrape Canada 3000 off the tail. <laughs> Monarch butterflies have started returning to Canada. They would have been here earlier except for the eight-hour lineup to get through Canada Customs. <laughs> so far, there have been no complaints of butterfly profiling. <laughs> the world continues to pay tribute to the Queen Mother, who lived to 101. To put it in perspective, the grand, dignified royal witnessed many of history's greatest achievements. Marconi's first transatlantic broadcast, man's first step on the moon, and... Howie Mandel with a glove on his head. <laughs> Prince Harry was so upset with the news of his great-grandmother's passing, he dropped his roach clip. <laughs> In the Middle East, Yasser Arafat's troubles continue. We reached him by phone at what's left of his compound in the West Bank. Hello, Miss Wesley. Hey, knock off the guns. I've got CBC on the line. Mr. Arafat, how bad is your situation there? Very bad. My life is in such danger, even Norwich Union doesn't return my calls. <laughs> Israel says keeping you trapped is totally justified. No way is it fair. It is cruel, inhumane. I cannot even get out to see death to smoochie. <laughs> Wendy, my living conditions are deplorable. I plead for compassion. I... Wait, wait. Uh, what is it? Israeli troops? Pizza's here. I got to go. <laughs> Okay, time for our panel. From Washington, hot air personified David Halton. Nice to be here, Wendy. Not from my perspective. <laughs> from the University of Toronto, former reformer Preston Manning. 
I'm back, sweet cheeks. We four. From Ottawa, rock diva Alanis Morissette. Wendy, I believe the expression of inner suffusion is expedient when one takes on the endeavor of a Kerouac-esque journey. What does that uh, mean? Hello. <laughs> okay. This weekend is the start of daylight saving. Wendy, the clocks go forward on Sunday, and that means Afghanistan is now 100 years and one hour behind the rest of the world. <laughs> Our Canadian troops are still in Afghanistan, but a report says some of them are actually staying in hotels there. Well, maybe so, Wendy, but life is still difficult. As sometimes when room service finally arrives, the falafels are cold. <laughs> yeah, not only that, the only in-room movie you can rent is Debbie Does Kabul. <laughs> Alanis, your thoughts on the Afghanistan situation? Well, I find it reminiscent of my stay in Mother India, which paradoxically provided me a state of numinous bliss in my search for enlightenment and self-knowledge. Thank you, India. Preston, could you comment on that? Not in this lifetime. <laughs> the new $24 airline security charge went into effect this week. Preston. Oh, this is just another federal cash grab. We've got to do something to reduce costs. Then how would you deal with funding security? Well, it's simple. I'd make a security checkpoint self-serve. Oh, 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 oh. Golly, I still got it, don't I? Oh, 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 oh. Well, let's hope it's not contagious. <laughs> you know, the act of flying is an ethereal experience. Oh, God, here she goes again. <laughs> but in light of recent events, the comfort level has been psychologically decimated, literally speaking to the extent we feel a T.S. Eliot-like sense of despair bordering on an enigmatic Dorothy Parker. <laughs> David, would you like to comment? I would, Wendy, but I have no idea what the topic is. <laughs> Let's move on. Hydro One, Ontario's electricity company, is hiking its rates while its CEO takes home $2.2 million a year. David? Well, one day, Hydro One is run by greedy corporate executives. And I... <laughs> but I mean that in the nicest way. Final thoughts, Alanis? As the poetic voice of my generation, quite different from Celine Dion, who married out of her species. <laughs> I believe I must surrender my foibles and, and embrace the that's essence of quite enough. Of I'm Wendy Hesley. Like Good night. night. Former, even if it means self-flagellation. <laughs> and now, thoughts of a curmudgeon. Well, the Royal Canadian Mint has just issued a new $5 bill, and I'm just sick about it. <laughs> our education and health care systems are on the verge of collapse. Our national highways are the envy of Namibia. And we're worried about making our money prettier? What was wrong with the old five? The kingfisher not a Canadian enough looking bird? Good eating on a kingfisher. <laughs> but now he's been replaced with a bunch of kids playing hockey. You want a real Canadian scene? How about a bunch of people lining up for their pogey checks? <laughs> or a bunch of coffee drinkers breaking their fingernails trying to roll up the rim to win? Yeah. Or how about a bunch of teenagers trying to buy beer with fake ID? <laughs> Those were the days, eh? <laughs> well, I don't like this thing. You can no longer fold it up to make Wilfred Laurier's chin look like Harpo Marx's bum. <laughs> and they say this new five has hidden numbers and special codes so a crook can't duplicate it. Well, what they don't tell you is that it costs the government six bucks to counterfeit proof the five. <laughs> what could be more Canadian than that? The fiver used to be just like an old friend. Familiar, not totally worthless, 
and never around when you really need it. <laughs> Come to think of it, what can you do with a five these days? Not much, eh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Insightful, informative interviews. It's all about me with your host, me, Barbara Stevens. Good evening. Tonight we interview a rising star on the political scene. No, not me. The new leader of the Alliance Party, Stephen Harper. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Harper, to All About Me. Uh, my pleasure, uh, being <laughs> relatively new to... Uh, no, no, it's my pleasure, totally. You are the most important guest I've had on this show, well, since Homer Simpson. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that show. He's my favorite actor. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Harper, you moved to Alberta in 1978. Who are you hiding from? <laughs> what? 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 What kind of interview is this? Ooh, somebody's been scaling Mount Ego. Why, why do you keep interrupting me? Well, you've obviously forgotten this show is all about me. Okay, tell me about yourself. Well, uh, I moved to Alberta in 1978. I lived in Alberta once. Oh, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. How about you? Oh, yeah. I mean, no. Uh, uh, pardon? Go on, please. I find you fascinating. Uh... I received degrees from the University of Calgary in economics and partying. Uh, I've written uh, for many prestigious publications and the Globe and Mail. Um, I spent six months at the DeVry Institute. Didn't learn a damn thing. Go on. I worked for Deborah Gray when she uh, became the first reform MP ever elected to the House of Commons. I love Deborah Gray. She is brilliant. Deborah Gray should be the leader of the Alliance Party. You're a liberal, aren't you? Actually, I don't vote. Why bother? I'm not running. <laughs> now, tell me something. You're the head of the National Citizens Coalition, a radical right-wing paramilitary nut bar fringe group, aren't you? You are totally out of line. No way is it a paramilitary group. Well, is it true? Is it true what they say about you? Is what true? Oh, you really do have a temper. I, I do not have a temper. Fine, fine. Whatever you say, just don't hit me. I, I, I never... I, I... Final question, Mr. Harper. There are rumors concerning your personal life. In fact, several members of your party are shocked at the very suggestion. Are these rumors true? What the hell are you talking about? Are you or are you not a practicing bilingual? What has that got to do with my politics? Well, many Westerners don't want their leaders using the French tongue. Look, if, if I wanted this kind of aggravation, I, I'd hang out with Stockwell Day. Gee, I wonder what got into him. Well, it doesn't really matter because this show is all about me. I'm Barbara Stevens. Bye-bye. decided to show up, eh, Millie? Oh, I had trouble getting the bus driver to stop at the park entrance. Well, the bus doesn't stop at the park entrance, you old bat. Well, that's what the driver was trying to tell me. It's amazing the cooperation you get with a kind word and a smack in the head. That's so true. Old age does have its advantages. Say, do you know the difference between an old person and a young person? Uh, depends. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you're right. I tell you, Myrtle, I don't know what the world is coming to. But take, for example, the environment. Green people are worried about the future of the baby seal puppies. Oh, I say save the seals and kill the green people. <laughs> it's not right to kill animals for fur. Uh, what the hell's on your collar there? It's only a friend. 
frickin' fox. <laughs> These things grow on trees. I tell you, Millie, the young people today are just selfish. They got their priorities all screwed up. They care more about cell phones than the important things in life. Like what? Well, like getting up each and every morning and having a right good bowel movement. Oh, <laughs> oh there's nothing like it, Millie. Let's you know you're still alive. <laughs> there's this hotshot scientist who's written a bestseller about global warming. I think it's on Oprah Winfrey's book list. Uh, Oprah's book list? Well, that Oprah Winfrey recommends a book she probably hasn't even read herself, and, and 10 million mindless women rush out to buy it. How pathetic is that? What's next? Oprah's cat food list? <laughs> Oprah recommends whiskers, and hordes of women rush out and stock up. What is the world coming to when a talk show host with more money than a Swiss bank can tell us what to read? I don't see too many books titled How to Think for Yourself on her flippin' little Oprah list. <laughs> she should focus on her own damn life, that rich, unmarried, busybody. Hey, Oprah, stop bossing us around and get married, you floozy old tart. <laughs> I buy whiskers. <laughs> I didn't know you have a cat. I don't. <laughs> Next weekend, there's Air Force Friday and Air Force Sunday. With an all-new doubleheader one-hour special. Sunday, April 14th at 8. Yeah, Sunday at 8. You're on CBC.